All right.
everybody's doing well. Shabbat Shalom family. I got both of my channels live streaming this. So you're more than welcome to jump in between channels because I got different people on each one. <laughs> so I'm glad everybody's here. I'm glad you're here, Mr. Uh, Pirate Brain. I did see you were blocked. I did unblock you. So everybody should be okay on both channels. I got tons of people mod up on both. You know how these trolls are, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to listen to Brother L. And this is having respect of persons versus earning respect. So I love this man's videos. He does such great videos. Okay, let me go ahead and share my screen and then we can get started. All right, can everybody see the screen? Give me a one. All right, great, great. All right, getting ones on both channels. Good. All right. So we are ready to get started then. To the Most High Elohim, all praise to the Ancient of Days. Let's start off at uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 21. Here's what it says. I charge thee before the Most High and Yeshua HaMashiach and the elect angels that thou observe these things without preferring one before another doing nothing by partiality. Here in the scripture, the apostles are telling the elders and the captains of the congregations not to do anything with partiality in order so that they do not respect persons. There's something called respecting persons. That's when people have biases and uh, preferences that are not rooted in the order and hierarchy of the most high but rather rooted in their own personal vain opinions. And the scripture here is telling the men and women of the Most High that we must not be like that amongst ourselves because that is the way that those who are outside of us behave. That is the way of the Gentile, the world, the stranger with the biases and preferential treatments and what we can call in this society the false equality. We're going to get into that a little bit later. But in this society right now, there's a false equality movement. And they commit a lot of injustice, partiality under the guise of equality. There's a lot of falsehood behind that quote unquote equality movement. But we're going to get into that a little bit later. The scripture says we must first start with the house of the Most High and the people of Elohim and purge out that partiality amongst us. Let's go to James chapter three, verse 16 and 17. Here's what it says. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Over and over and over again, the scripture is telling us not to have that partiality or that respect of persons. And we know that the things that are written in the New Testament are simply them expounding upon what has already been written in the law. 
for the things we read in the New Testament in the book of 1 Timothy and James is also written like in Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 17 where it says, ye shall not respect persons in judgment, but ye shall hear the small as well as the great. Ye shall not be afraid of the face of man, for the judgment is the most highs, and the cause that is too hard for you, bring it unto me. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 19, thou shalt not rest judgment, thou shalt not respect persons. The scripture over and over and over again warns us against having partiality, having personal preferences that are not in line with the most high, and making judgments based on that. There's so many scriptures that warn against respecting persons that we don't have time to go through them all. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 23. These things also belong to the wise. It is not good to have respect of persons in judgment. Proverbs 28, 21. To have respect of persons is not good. For for a priest of bread, that man will transgress. Scripture tells us over and over and over again that we are not to respect persons. And also the scripture tells us that the most high does not respect persons. Romans chapter two, verse 11, it says, for there is no respect of persons with the most high. Now, here's where people often get it misconstrued. And many times they mistake respect of persons with false equality because in this society that we've been raised in they have falsely taught us that everybody's on the same level but whenever we look at scriptures we see that that is not the case whenever we look at scriptures here's what we see here's what the scripture tells us galatians chapter 6 starting at verse 3 for if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing he deceiveth himself but let every man prove his own work. Verse five, for every man shall bear his own burden. Verse seven, be not deceived. The most high is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. That's Galatians chapter six. So Galatians chapter six, along with other scriptures is telling us two things. It's telling us that there is a difference between respect of persons and the reward of earners. There's a difference between respect of persons and rewarding earners. Respect of persons is to put one above another just off our own vain personal opinions and biases with no scriptural basis. But giving rewards to those who have earned it, that's a totally different story. Because in the scripture and in the kingdom of the most high, rewards are given to those who have earned. So everybody's not on the same level. We're at the level we're at according to fruit. First of all, according to the mercy of the most high, and then according to faith and works. But in this society, they would have us believe that everybody is equal. It goes back to like they say that in these times, we live in the time of uh, clout chasing and entitlement. What do I mean by that? We live in a time where people feel entitled to everything, even if they have not done anything. They feel entitled to everything, even if they have not done anything. There's a quote that's out there and people say, you wasn't with me shooting shots in the gym. You wasn't with me um, running, running miles on the yard. What does that mean? It means I put my work in in order to get where I'm at right now. And we live at a time where people clout chase and they want to be able to have a high reward without putting in high amount of work. And it creates a mentality of false equality where people feel like they are entitled to the best and the greatest when they put in the least amount of work. And that creates a false mentality in people. And many times they equate 
respecting persons with people receiving the reward that they've earned. They'll sit back and say, that person doesn't deserve that. That person doesn't deserve this. And they'll try to falsely justify it by saying, we all equal. Ain't, Ain't nobody above another. But does the most high view things like that? No, he doesn't. And here's our proof. Let's take a look at salvation. Is everybody going to go to heaven? Is everybody going to make it? The answer is no, everybody is not going to make it to heaven. So even though the most high is no respecter of persons, he also is not going to give a reward to those who haven't, haven't earned it. You see the difference? He doesn't respect persons in the regard that all men have an opportunity. They have the chance to enter into the kingdom if they do right by the most high, if they are obedient to the most high. All men have the opportunity, but not everyone earns. Not everyone has the faith and works to where they will be counted worthy to enter into the kingdom. The father has mercy upon all. He showed us mercy by giving us an opportunity for salvation. That's the mercy. Now it's on us to have the faith and works to be found worthy to enter into the kingdom. But not everybody gets in. Yet the most high is no respecter of persons, but he's still not going to let any and everybody into his kingdom. There's protocol, there's requirements to meet in order to enter into his kingdom. So are you starting to see the difference now between respect of persons and giving reward to those who have earned it? But in this society, they'll try to make it seem like everybody deserves a reward, even those who have not put the work in. That's where we come up with this culture of the clout chasers, clout chasers, people who want to gain fame, notoriety, uh, power. The glitz and the glamour that they want to be held in high esteem, or as it says in the scripture, they seek the preeminence. They want to be seen. They want to be listened to. They want to be known. They want to make a name for themselves without putting in the work that it takes to be on that platform in that position. They want the reward without the work. And they do it all in the name of saying, hey, we all on the same level. No, not according to scripture. Let's go to some more scriptures. Let's go to Matthew chapter 16, starting at verse uh, 27. It says, for the son of man shall come in the glory of his father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Revelation chapter 22, verse 12, and behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Let's use another example of sports. In sports, does everybody win the Super Bowl? No, every team does not win the Super Bowl. Does every team win the uh, the Larry O'Brien championship trophy? No, every team does not win it. Does every team win the Stanley Cup? No, everybody does not win it. Those who have earned it and those who have overcome and won the championship, those are the ones that earn that ring put on their finger, the championship ring. Those of us who endure to the end to inherit salvation, we earn that through, first, the mercy and grace of the Most High, and second, through our faith and works. As the Messiah just got done saying here, every man will be rewarded according as his work shall be. And it's important to have this conversation because a lot of people are deceived by this false equality movement that's going on in the culture right now. This movement that says we're all on the same level, everybody's the same, you can do what you want to do, and no matter what you do, you'll always be on the same level as everybody else. But that's partiality and that's hypocrisy because let's take the example of a husband or a wife. Let's say a sister is married to a man. He cheats on her, lies to her, beats her, doesn't work to provide for her, doesn't take care of his children. And then he sits there and looks her in her eyes and says, 
I'm your husband, so you still got to respect me and obey me. And we got folks in this walk that have that mentality where they'll say, because my title is husband or because my title is wife, I can do anything I want to do and I still deserve your respect. No, that's not how this works. According to scripture, there's duties of husband and wife. Let's take it as an example of an elder in a, a congregation. Let's say an elder is uh, robbing money from the flock, lying to the flock, uh, beating down members of the flock, abandoning the flock, and then sits there and stands up in front of everybody and says, because I'm y'all elder, y'all still have to respect the position that I'm in. How's that sound, family? How's that sound? Because here's where people get it mixed up. What puts us all on the same level is punishment for sin. Punishment for sin is what puts us on the same level. Because no matter whether somebody is rich, poor, Hebrew, Gentile, there's judgment for sin. The adulterer, whether the adulterer be Hebrew or Gentile, male or female, receives judgment. The thief, whether they be Hebrew, Gentile, male or female, receives the same judgment. The thing that puts us all on the same level is punishment for sin. The wages of sin is death for everybody across the board. That's what makes us all equal. But we're not all equal because there are some who have faith and works that are more. As the Messiah said, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. And I'm not bringing this forth to make it seem like a competition because the scripture says, do not compare yourself amongst yourself. So this is not for comparison's sake. This is to motivate and inspire all of us to use our faith to produce more fruit. That's what this is for. This is to wake us up out of that mentality of feeling like we're owed something and we're on the same level as everybody, even if we're just not doing nothing with what the Father has given us. This is to motivate us to action. It's like this. Imagine if you was really trying to uh, make a team, right? No matter what team it is, a uh, chess team, football team, and they told you these are the requirements in order to make the team. If you can run a mile this fast, you'll make the team. If you can score this high on a test, you'll make the team. If they put all the requirements out there of what you needed to do to make the team, you wouldn't walk up to the coach or the leader of that organization and say, hey, you, you need to just let me on this team just because I'm me. You need to let me on this team. Even if I don't meet these requirements, I need to be on that team because I say I need to be on that team. That's that's partiality thinking. That's entitlement mentality. That's the way many of these Gentiles think with what they call white privilege, where a lot of these white folks feel like they should have something or be somewhere just because of the whiteness of their skin. That's how they've been operating for so long. That's why judgment soon comes upon them, because that's their thinking. Even the Messiah told the disciples that when they were arguing about who, who would do this and who would do what in the kingdom. And the Messiah said, look, the Gentiles think like that. What you need to do is focus on serving. He that is greatest is he who serves. So even the Messiah is telling us the same thing I'm saying here, that we have to have that mentality to serve, to work, to earn our spot. Why do you think the Messiah told them that? Greatest among you is he who serves. In sports, they would say, greatest among you is he who is the first in here to practice and the last to leave. The one who is willing to put it all on the line and put that work in gets that spot on the team. Are you starting to see this? But society would have you think through this false equality movement that everybody's on the same level no matter what. And the scripture tells us this would be the mentality of the world in these times, that people would be clout chasers, that people would believe they deserve a high spot just because. 
And we live in a world right now that rewards the unworthy and punishes the innocent. They reward people who are unworthy, but they punish people who are innocent. And scripture told us it would come to this. Let's go to the wisdom of, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the martyrdom of Isaiah, also called the ascension of Isaiah. It's a lost book, chapter three, verse eight. Listen to what Isaiah prophesies and what he said it would be like in these last times. And tell me that is not what we're dealing with as it pertains to people being clout chasers and having entitlement mentalities. People wanting to have fame and notoriety. People clout chasing to try to make a name for themselves even if they have not put the work in to earn that spot. It's similar to how you see sometimes in this walk, somebody will wake up to uh, who they are with, with realizing they're a Hebrew and an Israelite, just woke up a week ago, ain't read nothing but two chapters in the scripture and already running out there self-appointing and self-anointing themselves as a moray or the leader of the 144,000. Just woke up last week. And now lifting themselves up and self-appointing themselves to try to teach and lord over everybody else. When they've not put that work in to train and humble themselves under other capable men of the most high who have earned their spot. You see, we live at a time where people just self-appoint and self-anoint themselves and place themselves in positions. And the way they justify it is to say, we all on the same level. If they can do it, I can do it too. That's the mentality they, that they approach this with. And this is why the scripture says what it says right here. Martyrdom of Isaiah chapter three, verse eight. It says, in those days, there will be many that love office, yet lacking wisdom. And there will be many wicked elders and shepherds that wrong their sheep. So the scripture here is saying that in these last days, there are people who are in leadership positions who have not earned that spot. They just self-appointed and self-anointed themselves. There are people on the international scale and national scale that they've not earned that spot. We live in that time right now where People have a mentality of, I am whatever I say I am. No matter what you think and no matter how illogical it is, because I say I'm that, I am that. People who were born women, quote unquote, getting a sex change and saying, I'm a man now because I say I'm a man. People that was born men getting a sex change and then they say, I'm a woman now because I say I'm a woman. And through society, they're doing it all under the guise of the false equality movement. They call that equality. Their definition of equality is a person can be who, whoever they say they are. And you have to agree with it. That's false equality. And they'll try to say, if you don't go along with that, that uh, you're respecting persons. You're being biased. But that's not how the scripture defines respecting persons. According to the scripture, respecting persons would be putting people in positions that they've not earned. Even Apostle Paul, once he received his conversion, the scripture says that he went to study in the deserts of Arabia for three years. He went to study, to learn even before he ran out there and started teaching and preaching to others. You see, he had to go check in with the disciples, with Peter and James and all those brothers. He had to go check in with them, learn under them. He didn't just jump out there. Even the Messiah waited till he was 30 years old before he went out there to start teaching and preaching. Now, I'm not saying a person has to be a certain age, all I'm saying is that even the Messiah took his time before going out there and beginning his ministry. Jeremiah, even though he was at a young age, the father still was preparing him. Jeremiah, young brother, 15, 16, 17 years old when the Most High called him. So it's not about age. What it is about is us 
humbling ourselves to go through the process and work and earning our reward and not having an entitlement mentality to say, hey, we all on the same level. So I, I, I need to get that just like they need to get that, even if I haven't earned it. That's why the scripture says that leads to strife and jealousy and and coveting because people want positions of power. People want to be in a position where a lot of people are listening to them, hearing them, looking at them, following them. It's the whole social media apparatus where people want a lot of followers and people want notoriety and power. And they'll try to curtail the process of putting in the work just to get that position. This is why we live in a time where a lot of folks come and go. They come and go. One night wonders, one one hit sensations. Because many times people are thrust into positions that they've not earned, so they're not able to keep it because they didn't earn it. But the Most High does not want us as his people to be like that. Listen to what else it says here in verse nine of martyrdom of Isaiah chapter three. It says they will be rapacious because they do not have holy shepherds and many exchange the glory of the righteous robes for the love of money. And there will be much respect of persons in those days and lovers of the glory of this world and many slanderers and vain glory will there be at the approach of the most high and the Holy Spirit will withdraw from many. So the scripture here says that in these last days, there would be much respect of persons. And because of that, everything would be flipped upside down. Where like it says in the scripture that princes will walk like servants and slaves and uh, servants and slaves will be treated like princes. Everything is flipped around upside down. Evil is good, good is evil. And the reason that has taken place is because people have come with that false equality movement. The false equality movement blurs the line between good and evil, evil and good, because they say you can do anything. You can do what you want, be who you want, and nobody can say anything to you. It's false equality. It sounds good, but it's actually respect of persons. This false equality movement is having the opposite effect of what they say they want to accomplish. It's actually causing even more injustice and oppression. Let's go to the book of 2 Baruch chapter 70, because he also talks about this dynamic in the last days of the respect of persons. Listen to what it says here. He says, the days come and it shall be when the time of the age has ripened and the harvest of its evil and good seeds has come that the mighty one will bring upon the earth and its inhabitants and upon its rulers perturbation of spirit and stupor of heart. And they shall hate one another and provoke one another to fight. Listen to this. And the mean shall rule over the honorable and those of low degree shall be extolled above the famous and the many shall be delivered into the hands of the few. And those who were nothing shall rule over the strong. Listen to this. And the poor shall have abundance beyond the rich and the impious shall exalt themselves above the heroic and the wise shall be silent and the foolish shall speak. The scripture here is saying that because of this movement of false equality, of people saying that everybody's on the same level, guess what that means now? That means that fools, I'm talking about plum idiots, now feel like they have more things to say than a wise person. This false equality movement that has allowed everybody to just be who they want to be, say what they want to say, because of that, now we got foolish folks that are being followed and the blind lead the blind and they both fall into a ditch. It says the fools shall speak and the wise shall be silent. It says the impious shall exalt themselves above the heroic. Even look at the modern day politics. Most of the dudes that are the leaders of these countries were not warriors. They were not fighters. So the scripture here says that the true heroes and those who are truly heroic and the real warriors and fighters, those will be the ones that they treat bad. Look at how they treat a lot of the veterans in this society. 
But look at how they treat a lot of these politicians who have not fought a day in their life for the country that they swear they so patriotic for. The scripture said this would happen. And the reason being is because we live in that time of clout chasing and entitlement where people feel like they deserve the highest position, even if they've not put in the work that is the requirement for being in that highest position. You see, they covet power and they covet having a place of leadership. And that goes from in the world all the way to some of the folks in this walk. Because there's that spirit of clout chasing is heavy amongst us. And this is why I tried to show an example like through my platform. I have many people who come and speak that I open my platform to. And some are poor, some are rich, some are female, some are male. But here's the thing that is always synonymous with them. They love the most high, they serve the most high, and they have fruit towards the most high. That's the thing. I'm not going to have no uh, wicked folks come in here speaking to the people. I'm not going to open my platform to no wicked folks. But I don't respect persons in regard to uh, where people at in life. Because guess what? A person could be poor and wicked. A person could be poor and righteous. A person could be rich and wicked. And a person could be rich and righteous. So guess what? I want to be around the righteous, whether they're poor or rich. We're not going to have no clout chasing in this ministry. We're going to give platform to those who are having fruit towards the most high and love the people of the most high. That's what this is about. But you will have some out there in the world and even in some ministries that the scripture talks about this. Listen to this. Let's go to James chapter two, starting at verse one. It says, my brethren, have not the faith of Yeshua HaMashiach, the Elohim of glory, with respect of persons. For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring and goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that weareth the clothing, the rich clothing, and say unto him, sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, stand thou here, or sit here under my footstool, are ye not then partial in yourselves, and are become judges of evil thoughts? So the scripture here is saying that you had brothers in the congregations that was uh, judging folks, that whenever they came in to the congregation, now pay close attention, they were not judging the person's fruit, they were just judging appearances. There's a difference between judging fruit and judging appearances. The scripture does tell us to judge fruit because the Messiah said you shall know them by their fruit. So we are not to judge appearances, but we can judge fruit. Hallelujah. And what the brothers in this congregation were doing is they didn't care whether a person was wicked or not. But because they presented themselves a certain way, they put that person up on a, ple a pedestal amongst the people. It wasn't about them being rich or poor, because like I said, there's people who are rich who are righteous, some who are rich who are wicked. There's some folks who are poor who are wicked. There's folks who are poor who are righteous. So when you read these scriptures, it's not talking about rich versus poor. What we need to get in our head is that we as a people need to know that our spot needs to be earned with each other and with the Most High. Even the scripture tells us to know those that labor among you. We must always know our fruit and know our brother and sister fruit. Each man and woman has their own work to do. But you will see this take place even in the Hebrew community. I've seen it myself where uh, just sit back and observe whenever brothers and sisters fellowship, you'll see some brothers and sisters sizing people up, you know, giving them that head to toe look, uh, ch checking for the beard, checking for the, uh, the head covering, checking for the fringes, doing all this scanning of people, you know? We scan those outward things, but 
But when it comes time to scan the fruit, you could have a brother that has a full beard, uh, locks, fringes down to his knees and be an adulterer, a murderer and all that. And brothers will give him a high place of honor just because how he presents himself. Then another brother could, could, could come in, doesn't have the extravagant fringes on, low key, humble, you know, not extravagant with it. And the, the brother's the uh, un, uh, highest example of righteousness. The people will look at him a certain type of way because he don't uh, come off as being Hebrew enough. And it goes for the sisters too. We size each other up so much in this walk. Even if we, we don't realize we're doing it, it's subconscious. We size each other up. And I'm not talking about examining each other's fruit. I'm talking about people just having respect of persons and personal biases. Because remember, there's a difference. We can judge people's fruit. If a person constantly is a liar, a thief, or a murderer, then we can examine that fruit. But if, if you don't know a person's fruit and you're just looking at an appearance, we can't have respect to persons in that regard. If that person doesn't look like how you want them to look or sound like how you want them to sound according to your personal preferences, that's respect to persons and that's wrong according to scripture. And we know this goes on in the world a lot too. I mean, out in the world, if, if you don't got no uh, tight hair lining and some clean shoes, you can forget about it. Ain't nobody going to hear nothing you got to say. I see it all the time. I, I observe how people interact, man. If you go uh, to, to a group of Negroes and, and, and you ain't got on no clean shoes or no nice hair lining, they're not going to listen to what you got to say. They looking at what you driving. They looking at uh, your shoes. They looking at your hair lining. They looking at all these things to size you up, whether you're somebody that they need to listen to or not. That, that goes on in the world. And in the Hebrew community, we have our own versions of respect of persons. And we do it more than we actually think. We respect persons a lot amongst the Hebrew community. This is why over and over and over again, the scripture tells us to judge righteous judgment. Another example of how I've seen this go on, especially in this walk, is you could be in a congregation, right? And let's say there's a sister that walks in that a lot of the brothers think is beautiful. Uh, there may be a sister that walks in that, let's say she, she has, has a certain type of body shape that most of the brothers like, a certain type of facial look most of the brothers like. That sister is going to get so many shaloms and how you doing and uh, sis, you need anything. The brothers are going to cater to her. But if another sister walks in that doesn't have the body shape, doesn't have those type of looks that most of the brothers like, because let's be real, even in this walk, some brothers be lusting heavy. That next sister that doesn't have the body shape that they like, doesn't have the face type of look that they like, she's not going to get as many shaloms. She's not going to get as many how you doing, sis. I've seen it happen with my own eyes, family. So there's respect of persons, even among our people, as it pertains to people's uh, type of attractiveness and how people look, how attractive people are or how attractive people uh, feel somebody is not. That's what's so beautiful about the story of the Messiah, because the scripture says that the Messiah was not a handsome man. It says it right there in the book of Isaiah. So a lot of these folks, especially these Christians running around talking about, I love Jesus. And even some of these sisters in the walk, Yahweh Shai, Yeshia, all this and that. If the Messiah was on earth today, a lot of these same Negroes would be roasting the Messiah. Because you know how Negroes love to roast people for how they look. Man, look, look how his head shaped. Man, look, look, look at dude. Dang, you got a big head. Our people always want to roast somebody. I tell you, a lot of these Negroes that say they love the Messiah, they would have respect of persons and they would not receive him because he would he would not probably be a part of the camp or group that they hold as a preference above everybody else. Just like in the days when the Messiah walked the earth, he wasn't a part of no camp or group. Him and his disciples had their own thing going on and they wasn't a part of the Pharisees, Sadducees and all these religious cliques. So some of these Negroes would be offended that the Messiah was not with their camp or their group. 
and they would have respect of persons. They would not even listen to the Messiah. Some of these sisters would not listen to the Messiah because they would feel like he wasn't cute enough. They, they need a teacher that's cute. They want to be able to listen to somebody that uh, is cute or they like their voice. All these respect of person, personal biases that people have, man. And the, the scripture is telling us not to do that, yo. And people may not think that's a serious thing, but some people will lose their salvation because of respect of persons. They'll end up following after false prophets and false messiahs because that person appealed to a certain bias or vain uh, desire that you have. Something about them appealed to a vain desire that you had. And because of that, they were able to take you to the pits of hell right with them. That's why, family, the scripture says, have no respect of persons. Instead, what we need to do is give honor to whom honor is due. This is what the scripture says. Listen to what it says in Romans chapter 13, verse 7. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Scripture tells us to honor those who have earned that spot of honor. Hallelujah. All praise. It's a difference between respecting persons and giving honor to whom honor is due. If a person is due of that honor, give them that honor. If they're not, don't. Doesn't mean disrespect them. Doesn't mean uh, treat them like piss. But they just don't deserve that level of honor. That's what the scripture is saying. And this is pretty much common sense, family. And what it also does, it takes that entitlement mentality away from us. It, it, it gives us more of a mentality of, Father, I thank you for your grace and mercy that you've shown me. Please give me the strength and the ability to be able to earn my spot. Please give me the strength and ability to be able to bear fruit and to sow abundance so I reap abundance, to put in the work so I can receive the reward that I know myself to be worthy of. You know, it, it gives us a more healthy, sane, sober state of mind. We feel less entitled. Let me give you another example. Let's say the ministry uh, has started an orphanage or a child care center. And let's say you got a Negro that comes along that he is a registered sex offender. He's molested multiple children. And he comes talking about shalom, hallelujah, all praise to the most high and Yahweh got his fringes on, got his beard, all that. But the brother's a registered sex offender. Now. Would it not be idiotic to put this man um, in the daycare as one of the, the, the sitters to take, take care of the children? Would that not be ignorant? Some people may say, man, you, you judging that brother's past, you respecting persons. Nah, nah. That is a situation where that's not respecting persons. That's treating the individual according to what their works have been. If somebody has had molested children, I'm not going to put them around children. Okay? This is wisdom and common sense speaking, family. Are you starting to see what I'm talking about here? If somebody has been a thief, I'm not going to make them the uh, ministry treasurer. That's judging according to their fruit. This is what we have to do with each other. There's a difference between respecting persons and given reward to earners. We have to deal with brothers and sisters according to their fruit, not according to respect of persons. You would not put a thief over the treasury. You would not put a child molester over the orphanage or the daycare ministry. This is wisdom and common sense. That's what you call dealing with people according to their fruit. That should make all the sense in the world to you. But what the world will do is they'll say, you're discriminating against this man because he's a sex offender and refusing to give him a job at the uh, orphanage or the daycare. And in the world, as wicked as the world is, this child molester could sue you for not giving him a, a job to be around children. <laughs> 
and say you discriminated against me. That, that, that's false equality. In this wicked, upside down, uh, bizarro world, they will punish you for being just. They will punish you for having righteous judgment in a situation. This is why so many people is uh, having lawsuits put on them. So many people getting fired from jobs over these little false equality things that they got going on. Which is another reason why Hamashiach said in these times, we got to be wise as a serpent. You got to know that that's what time these people are on right now and how twisted they think and don't get wrapped up in some of their mind games. What I want us all to get from this family is that whether by man or by the most high, we will be judged and evaluated according to our fruit. With the most high, there is no respect of persons. He's going to judge the work as well as the intent. So that should motivate us even more to show our fruit to the most high as being good and to show our fruit to our brother and sister as being good. Because our brothers and sisters are examining our fruit and the most high is examining our fruit. So that should motivate us to earn our spot according to his grace and mercy. Faith and works, family. Faith and works. And we can't be those type of people that whenever our track record and our fruit is testifying against us, that we then try to turn the tables and point at people who obviously are looking at our fruit and dealing with us according to our fruit. And then we want to get mad at them for them treating us uh, how, how our fruit shows us we need to be treated. If, if you've cheated uh, with, with multiple of your friends' wives, if you've been one of those brothers that uh, has betrayed multiple friends by sleeping with their wife, how can you be mad if uh, the, the next dude that you meet plays you at a distance, keeps you away from his wife because you got a track record of sleep, sleeping with people's wife? You see what I'm saying? We can't get mad and try to pull the, the inequality card or you ain't doing me right card when people deal with us according to our fruit. If you've been a thief, and somebody says, nah, bro, I, I don't want you over to the house. If you have been a thief and folk don't want to invite you over to their house, you can't get mad at them for not inviting you to your house when your fruit has shown that you're a thief. You see? This is common sense and wisdom stuff, family. We have to earn respect with our brothers and sisters. We can't have respect of persons, but we do have to earn respect. Hallelujah. Let that be a motivation for us, family. Let it be a motivation. Before I go, uh, I just want to make some brothers and sisters aware of uh, some of the works and fruits of the ministry that we've done that have been a blessing to our people. Uh, one of the projects we released recently, which is the uh, Book of Prayers audio book. Uh, this is an audio book that is narrated by myself that we released last week. It contains 44 chapters. Okay, y'all. You know, it's good that I can, um, you know, do the streaming on both channels. The tough part is communicating with y'all on both channels. That gets to be challenging, you know, trying to say hello to people on two different channels. So pardon me if I don't keep up with all of that. It's a little more difficult. But I definitely love this lesson. It was straightforward, easy to understand, and very powerful. And, and it's exactly the kind of lesson I think we can all use. You know, and one thing uh, Brother L has is he does um, the 613 laws and bylaws. And I bought that from him. And I have to tell y'all, I'm enjoying it because what I do is I turn it on and I meditate listening to the um, 613 laws. And, you know, you should definitely try that. Even if you don't have his and you just want to just get one right directly off of YouTube. Oh, it's powerful. Definitely try it. 
So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming. We'll definitely do this again next week. And it was great. We had 141 people come for this lesson today. So it was definitely worth having both channels where I could stream. So on that note, ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy the rest of your Sabbath. And, you know, I might be doing um, a live stream tomorrow on some current events because there are so many things to talk about. So everybody, Shabbat Shalom.